All right, in this video, let's go ahead and discuss uh, sprockets and gearing, and then we'll discuss chains. And uh, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll talk about gear ratios first. And then we've got this dirty chain here that we need to clean and I'll show you how to break the chain and put it back together. So gearing, gearing is going to be absolutely crucial to your success at the track. You're definitely gonna to wanna to find the proper gear ratio that you're gonna to need to run in order to make sure that you're as fast as you could be. And with these LO206 motors, we've got a rev limiter at 6,100 RPM. And the thought process is, is you want to be hitting the rev limiter at the end of the longest straightaway. And for us here in Utah, we have an extremely long straightaway, so that's not necessarily always the case. There's a lot of times that we've got a track configuration to where we have to gear it and we're, we're banging the rev limiter three quarters of the way down. But it just all depends on, on your track configuration. So in order to find your gear ratio, what you'll do is you'll take the number on your rear gear on your rear sprocket and divide that by the amount of teeth on your front sprocket. So for simplicity's sake, let's say we had a, a 60 tooth sprocket on the rear and a 15 tooth sprocket on the front, we'd be running a, a four to one gear ratio. And for our track, we usually run anywhere between, I'd say a 3.2 to one gear ratio and maybe up to a 3.5 to one gear ratio, say for example, in the rain. And the way we achieve that is a lot of the times we'll have a front 18 tooth front sprocket and on the rear we'll run anywhere between a 59 to say a 63, just depending on the track configuration. And, a lot, and sometimes if we've got a track with some tighter corners, uh, we'll run a 16 tooth front sprocket and that'll put us somewhere between, I'd say maybe a 54 and say like a 57 rear sprocket. And the reasoning we run a smaller front sprocket when we have a tighter track, there's, there's a theory that if you have a smaller front sprocket that it's actually gonna pull more out of the corner. There's a lot of guys that say a gear ratio is a gear ratio. I figure I have the sprocket We've got some tight turns, why not run the smaller gearing? If a gear ratio is a gear ratio, it shouldn't matter, right? So I go ahead and use both sizes and, and that's what we've actually put into our race plan. So you're gonna need to go out on your track and find your correct gearing and what you'll be looking for is where your rev limiter is hitting on your longest straightaway. And then depending on drafting and stuff, you may need to go up a tooth, down a tooth, but that's, that's basically how that works. It's pretty simple and obviously once you find your your gears that you run at your track it's gonna be real simple for you to, to pick and find what you're gonna need to run for the day so when we go out on practice that's that's one of our main goals is to find out what our gear ratio is gonna be for for whatever configuration we're running so when we're out there practicing that's what we're focusing on I'll stand down at the end of the straightaway and, and kind of listen to see where our go-karts hitting in the rev limiter We'll check our lap times, we'll drop a tooth, we'll, we'll add a tooth and just see what's, what's best. And a lot of the times you'll find you'll get to race day and all of a sudden you're banging on your rev limiter way too early. And in practice it was just fine, so you'll just go ahead and peel a tooth off and you should be good to go. But it's really as simple as that, something that uh, obviously you'll have to test at your track. And if you're in Utah, a lot of what we do is we run an 18 front and then uh, somewhere between a 59 and a, and a 63, just depending on condition. So if you're ever out here running, go ahead and start with those ratios. You should be good to go. All right, so let's move over to our chain. And we've got a dirty chain here. So we're gonna wanna go ahead and give this a quick cleaning. Let me grab some gloves. We're gonna spray some brake cleaner on this thing, get it cleaned off real quick. And then I'll show you how to, to break the chain if you're ever in a situation where you need to lengthen or shorten your chain, you're gonna to need to know to do this process. Or for example, if you go ahead and you put your, your axle back, your rear axle back in your go-kart and you forget to put your, your chain over the top of it, you're going to need to go ahead and break your chain and put it around the rear axle before you can get it over your sprockets. Okay, so let's just go ahead and give this chain a quick cleaning. Chains will get dirty um, and they also will wear and you'll notice that there'll be some little metal filings on them. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and clean those off just to make sure your chain's not binding or anything like that, causing extra wear that you don't need on there. Again, we're using brake cleaner, so go ahead and bust out your safety glasses. Throw those on and we'll just go ahead and spray this chain off real quick. 
You can get chain cleaner, but I just use brake cleaner. It seems to work just fine. I've already got it on hand. And you may want not want to use brake cleaner if you happen to have a chain, like an O-ring chain. Um, I'm not sure if they make 35 chains with O-rings, but we, we run a 35 chain. I would highly recommend that you also run a 35 chain. I've just seen too many guys throwing those 219 chains when they try to run them on their 206 motors. I don't see any reason for it. I figure there's a reason why they, they don't run 35 chains on two cycles, at least to my knowledge anyway. That's good enough. So from here, we will need to grab our, our chain breaker. And they'll have two of these little screws that you'll insert. This one right here will actually, you'll use to, re to remove the pin from inside your, your links there. So let's go ahead and just drop it in here. And I, these are usually just stay in here. I just pulled them out so I could show you. And this one is what you'll actually use to set the pin back in once we put the chain back together. And that guy goes in this side. So all you're gonna do is you'll just grab your chain and you'll set it in your chain breaker here. Make sure it's down all the way. And then what we'll do is we'll tighten up the screw that's got the pin on it. And what it's gonna actually do, if you can see that, is it's gonna push the pin out of the link out the other side of the chain. And you'll know when to stop because the screw will stop you so you don't got to worry about knowing where to stop. Okay, there it stopped. You'll want to go ahead and back that out. Take your chain out of your, your breaker here. And then all you'll do is just simply break the chain just like so. So if you've forgotten to put this around your axle before you put your rear axle in, you just break it slide it up around your rear axle and uh, and then what you'll do is you'll, to put it back together you'll just want to put the the link in and it'll kind of snap in there for you just like so and it'll, it'll kind of hold itself in there and then we'll grab our chain breaker back this screw out and you'll notice that there's a little notch here and what we'll do is we'll just actually rest that pin directly in that notch just like that and now all we have to do is tighten down this side. And again, this, this screw will stop you, so you don't gotta worry about judging where to stop. It'll stop you right where it needs to be. And you don't need to like torque it down with like a torque wrench or anything. Just as soon as it stops, you're good right there. Go ahead and back that off a little bit and uh, our chain should be put back together. I've never had a chain come apart on me, so don't ever worry about that. Feel free to break your chain as much as you need to, put it back together, take links out, put links in, whatever you need to do to make sure that your chain's correct length for, for the spacing you have between your front and rear sprocket. We'll do, we'll do another video and I'll show you how I actually install my rear sprocket and how, how the tension that we put on our chains. I actually run a real loose chain. I've, I've only thrown one chain in the, the years that we've been running this and it was simply because I had misaligned my rear sprocket. I made an adjustment right before my son went out and I shouldn't have done it. And the chain, the chain ended up coming off halfway through the race. He was leading the race. It was, it was pretty devastating. But yeah, chains simple as that. Gear ratios, make sure you find your proper gear ratio. And again, go have a good time at the track.